Hey, hey YouTube, what's up? Sam here, and I wanted to do a little bit of a catch-up video for RPG A Day. Um, so this is going to be questions 12, 13, and 14. <clears throat> and these were funny because when I looked at these three questions, the very first thing that popped into my head was all the same system. But I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go through each one and try to give the most honest answer that I can. Um, so we'll jump right into it. So question 12 was, which RPG has the most inspiring interior art? For me, this one is kind of a tie between Numenera and probably Force and Destiny from Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars RPG. Because Numenera has, first of all, a beautiful and brilliant map in there, which is very inspiring all in, in and of itself. And then just the weird creatures and the amazing artwork that's in that book, it's just second to none. Um, if I had to give one an edge, I would probably give it to Numenera because it's just so different and so intriguing and so just wonderfully weird. And that's what it's going for. You can look at the pictures in that book and really be inspired um, to create adventures just from the art in that book. But I did want to mention the, the FFG Star Wars line. I mean, all of the books are good. They, they all have amazing art. I just happen to really enjoy um, the art in the core book for Force and Destiny. Because first of all, who doesn't love Jedi, right? Um, but second of all, I, I think out of all the books, the, the picture that stands out to me the most is this scene basically where it's like two, it's a Jedi and a Sith standing on the outside of a, I think it's like a Star Destroyer or basically some sort of large capital ship with lightsabers ignited having a duel, right? That is like one of the freaking coolest pieces of art I think I've ever seen in an RPG book. And it's incredibly inspiring because it's one of those things where like, I would never have thought to, to do an encounter like that, right? Or to do uh, make that the basis of, a, of an adventure or a campaign or anything like that. But seeing that piece of artwork, it's just brilliant. And then, you know, the other images throughout that book really put you in the mood to run a game of fledgling force users trying to survive and thrive in the, you know, in this time where the Empire is all powerful, you know. It's just a just beautiful and amazing art. And if you guys haven't if you like Star Wars role playing and you haven't checked out the Fantasy Flight Games version yet, you really really need to. It's so good. So, number 1 for most inspiring art is Numenera uh with a near tie with Force and Destiny from uh, the Star Wars RPG line. So uh, qu the question 13 or day 13 is describe a game experience that changed how you play. So this one took a little bit of thought because sometimes I take these questions literally in terms of play as in a player at the table versus GMing. Um, but I think that there was one session that I had that changed both the way I play and the way I GM. Um, and I think it was a set, the very first session that I ever played with Alan Holloway in his um, Savage Lands series, right? I was playing a Tabaxi Ranger, um, Ranger variant, actually. And uh, we were playing 5th edition, and it was really, you know, it was really interesting because the group of people that I had with me were just, I mean, they were solid role players, but what they did was they really allowed me to kind of inject my narrative into the story as a whole and into their characters sometimes as well. Um, there was a, a time in that game where... Jeff Doty was playing um, a shaman class, I think, and it was really strange because, he, or it was not strange so much as it was really cool because he was um, playing this character that 
had magic, right? That, that, that used the spirits to kind of fuel his magic. And the way he was describing it was really interesting and evocative, right? But the way I looked at it was my character um, didn't have spells because, well, mechanically, because I chose the variant, the spellless, the variant ranger, or the spellless ranger, I think. Um, yeah, I think it chose the spellless ranger, which was great, and I like that a lot. And um, but I was thinking about it, and I was like, all right, well, tr- traditional rangers in D anD D have spells, so why wouldn't she have spells? And what I came up with was that. Her people were, were, you know, they knew magic, they, they embraced magic, but they, they were very much like ancestor worshippers, right? And, and their magic was fueled by the knowledge from the spirits and from the elemental forces of nature. And what ended up happening was her brothers were killed by a apex predator out in the jungle, and she had been reaching out to the spirits for help, for guidance. What do I do? How do I help with this? And they didn't give her any answers, and so she turned her back on the spirits. And because of that, she doesn't have any spells. But what was cool was when Jeff was doing his thing, I kind of imagined it in my head as like he was pulling the spirits into him and using those to cast spells. And I could see it, which was was big for my character because she normally couldn't see the spirits. And so I used that description and I and I kind of turned that into a role play moment. And then he took off with it. And he he used that to sort of flavor his spells and his descriptions from then on. Um, and that was really cool because, you know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that because I, I didn't want to overshadow his, you know, his descriptions or his narrative. I didn't, I didn't want to, to inject my personality onto his character. Cause I don't think that would be fair to do. Right. But I felt like it was a super important moment for my character. And I took a chance that he would roll with it. And he did. And I was super appreciative of that. And the rest of that group as well was awesome because I was able to play with uh, Jeremy Lilly and Samuel Torna as well. And they're great role players. And what what we realized was that regardless of the system, you can have an amazingly immersive role-playing experience by connecting with the characters, right? And really role-playing those interactions with the characters. And, you know, I was playing a female tabaxi, which is a cat person, spellless ranger, which was way outside the box for me. Um, Jeremy was playing an ape man, basically a um, sort of a custom class that that he sort of, I think, reflavored maybe an orc or um, uh, what do you call it Um, from Elemental Evil. Anyway, he I I don't know. I'm not as good with fifth edition as I used to be, but. Anyway, it was really cool, right? And and so there were some weird issues there that we had to contend with in terms of role playing, but it worked really well and it was so cool to see it all kind of come together. And and you know, Samuel played his character to the hill. I mean, it was brilliant and he just did such a good job. I mean, they all did. And so it was great because what it allowed me to do was realize that I could in these games put the narrative ahead of the character. And so it was the style that I'd always wanted to play in. And it was the style that I tried to inject as a GM. But as a player, I I usually would uh, change my style to accommodate the table and the way they play. Um, And I realized that it for me, it was much more satisfying to have that stronger story element than the gamey element. And Alan, to his credit, was brilliant about allowing us to do that, right? Um, and then we went on to play Fate games with him, and it was the same brilliant experience, um, just a lot less rules that we had to kind of figure out. Um, so that is heavily influenced the way I play. But I'm also going to give a, another part to this, which is that um, more from the GM side, uh, playing in a Edge of the Empire one-shot Uh, My very first one with John from Red Dice Diaries, that was pivotal for me because that helped me to understand the FFG system and realize that it was much easier than I thought it was in the book. And that has become my most favorite, is that the right word? Most favorite? It's become my favorite 
RPG to date. Um, I love Edge of the Empire. I love the Fantasy Flight Games system. I've spent entirely too much money on that system. Um, and I will continue to sp support that system. I hope to collect all of the material for that system at one point. It is so, so, so good. At least for me, I love it. And so that was pivotal for me, right? That that was That did change the way I play because that introduced me to that system and that narrative dice mechanic that I love. Um, and it helped me to realize that I don't enjoy as much games that have binary task resolution systems. Um, I enjoy games like Fate and like FFG Star Wars more because they are more narrative focused versus game focused. So that was question 13. Question 14, which RPG do you prefer for open-ended play? So again, I'm going to come back to Star Wars, um, but specifically Edge of the Empire. I feel like Edge of the Empire is a game that has so much depth and breadth to it, right? That it allows you to tell a lot of stories that you that you don't necessarily see in the Star Wars films, right? This is the book about the smugglers, about the bounty hunters, about the mercenaries, the mechanics, right? The the outlaw technicians, right? These guys who are living life out on the outer rim of the galaxy trying to just make their their you know their their lives right they're not necessarily tied up with the rebel alliance they're not necessarily budding force users that are you know trying to figure out how to learn the force and maybe become jedi they're not necessarily involved in the fight against the empire right they may not they may be smugglers who try to avoid the empire or or maybe have to deal with them but deal with them in interesting ways right but these might be the the stories about you know tracking down a, you know, a member of, you know, Sinar Fleet Systems who is working on a prototype ship that, you know, that, that he might or she might be looking to sell to, you know, co-op drive yards or something, right? Like there could be corporate espionage games involved there. This could be a game of the gambler who is looking to get into a high stakes Sabacc game so that he or she could earn enough credits to either upgrade a ship or maybe replace one that they least recently lost to, you know, impound by the empire or theft by a rival or what, you know, whatever Irre irreparable damage, um, with, you know, with pirates. Right. I mean, it could be the, the, just the simple smuggler story, right. Or it could be a band of mercenaries that are hired to, you know, protect a mining depot or ship way out in the outer rim from a group of, you know, hut controlled bandits and pirates that are trying to take it over. I mean, there is so much that you could do with that system and so many stories that you can tell that you could play it endlessly, right? And you could do it as a sandbox so easily because the Star Wars universe and galaxy is so big and so expansive that there's no limit to the uh, to the types of stories that you can tell, right? And I, I, I say Edge of the Empire specifically, I mean, I think you can do this in Age of Rebellion or Force and Destiny, but to me, those speak to a smaller type of story and they speak to a, a defined type of campaign arc. So Age of Rebellion, you are playing as members of the Rebel Alliance. Ultimately, you have an end goal, right? You are going to play through to see the destruction of the Empire, right? And you've got a ton of room there if you if you take a look at, you know, post Return of the Jedi up until the, um, you know, the rise of the resistance. Uh, and, you know, you could kind of morph your game into that if you wanted to. But but really, the way I see it is most of these games are played within that two year or three year time period, I think, between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Right. So if you're playing with that within that timeline, at some point, you are rebel operatives in a time when the empire is at its most powerful and most ferocious, right? It's just suffered a big loss and it is out for blood. And so to me, it seems like the natural course of progression for an edge of, for an age of rebellion campaign is victory 
up until the Battle of Hoth, at which point maybe that's where you culminate. Or at least that's how I would want to do it. Or you just, you do your thing until you die or get imprisoned because it's largely a hopeless fight, right? And so to me, and and it's more mission-based. And so I think that it lends itself towards more one-shots and more um, short mission-based campaigns, right? No, it doesn't have to, but that's where I think its sweet spot is. And with Force and Destiny, I feel like there is also a natural shelf life for those stories. You get to a point where you either become so powerful that you are basically now a Jedi. And what does that mean within the storyline, right? Um, You're going to come up against, eventually you're going to come up against a Darth Vader, you know, if you keep playing this out. and Or you're going to die well before you ever get to that point, right? Because... You are a force user in the Empire in a time when they are searching the galaxy to destroy or corrupt force users, right? And bring them over to the dark side. So they seem to have natural endpoints, at least if I was GMing it. But Edge of the Empire does not. Edge of the Empire is so broad and so expansive that I feel like that would be the perfect RPG for open-ended play. So... That's, you know, three questions one day. Hopefully, uh, at least during the week, I'll be able to do these daily and kind of keep up on them. But I would love to hear your thoughts on these three and what your questions are. I unfortunately haven't been able to watch a lot of the videos um, for questions 12, 13, and 14. So maybe I'll go back and watch some of those. But um, I would love to hear what you guys think. And keep an eye out on my channel in the next few months. Uh, I, I fully intend to start running more Star Wars games. I'll probably run a couple of um, OSR games as well. And, you know, I'm going to be running a Fate game here in September. But I think ultimately you're going to see more actual plays in the Fantasy Flight game Star Wars system over the three different lines. Maybe we'll see some Genesis content when that comes out um, the end of this year. But largely you're going to see that, you know, that IP, that 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 rule system um, with probably some OSR and some ICRPG put in there as well. So anyway, keep an eye out. You guys have a great day. Happy gaming.